Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that Israel would hit back hard against anyone who attacked his country. This is in response to an Iranian missile strike on U.S.-led forces in Iraq. Iranian forces launched more than a dozen ballistic missiles against two military bases in Iraq, marking the most significant attack in the growing conflict with the United States. The rockets fired at the Ain al-Assad base in Anbar province and a base in Erbil came amid escalating tensions amongst the U.S. over the U.S. killing of Iranian military commander Qasem Soleimani in Iraq last week. U.S. officials say that there are no initial reports of any casualties from the attack, but an assessment of the impact of the strikes is underway. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei says that the attack is a slap in the face for the U.S. There was a slap on them last night. A slap was delivered last night. But what's important is that the serious presence of America in the region should be ended. Well, we've, we've said very clearly that if the United States takes any further action, Iran will respond accordingly and we will respond in a very harsh way, but proportionately. Well, we did not start this process of escalation. The United States waged an economic war against Iran. The United States has to come to its senses. Political leaders have urged Iran and the United States uh, to refrain from any steps that would further aggravate ongoing tensions in the Middle East. The European Union says that the situation in the Middle East is extremely worrying, whilst the United Kingdom has urged Iran not to repeat what it calls reckless and dangerous attacks and instead to pursue urgent de-escalation. Meanwhile, in a statement, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron expressed his deep concern over recent events. Uh, Germany and Spain have since withdrawn most of their troops out of Iraq. For more, we now cross uh, to our correspondent in London, Holly Hudson. Holly, thanks very much indeed for joining us. And uh, so this attack by Iran, uh, I guess today people are busy trying to figure out, um, was it a miss, was it deliberate, or... What was they trying to do? Well, yes, lots of questions still unanswered over exactly uh, what happened in regards to this attack, whether it was just a face-saving exercise uh, for Iran to be seen to be doing something uh, domestically in retaliation, of course, uh, for uh, what happened, uh, what the U.S. Uh, did. But, however, we've heard from the U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Uh, he's appeared in public for the first time since uh, this crisis escalated. Much has been made about the fact that he has uh, sort of employed a hands-off approach so far. It hasn't appeared uh, in public since uh, the Christmas break, but he was in uh, Parliament today for Prime Minister's questions where he condemned the attack and repeated uh, the British government's message, British uh, government's call for de-escalation, calling for calm. Uh, he also, interestingly, uh, confirmed that there were no UK casualties uh, as a result of the strikes and as far as he was aware no US casualties either. Now that uh, might be good news for uh, Britain's push for a diplomatic solution for all of this. The Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab en route to Washington of course uh, no doubt to try and urge his counterpart Mike Pompeo uh, to de-escalate the situation to try and urge the, uh, their ally not to retaliate in any way. Interestingly as well Boris Johnson really ramped up uh, the language which sort of hardened uh, the government's stance over uh, General uh, Qasim Soleimani, saying that he had the blood of British troops on his hands. Now, much has been made about Britain's response, particularly in relation uh, to the US. So far, uh, the government have said that they support the US's right to self-defence and that the evidence, as far as they see it, uh, or as far as they have seen, stacks up uh, in regards to the 
legality of this attack. The, we saw the opposition leader, Jeremy Corbyn, raise questions over that of the government today, questioning how they see this as legal. Uh, and that has been something that's been raised many times uh, in the past few days, uh, whether Britain supports this attack and the relationship really between the U.S., and the UK. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, the opposition leader, even accusing Boris Johnson of uh, being scared of Donald Trump. In fact, the way he described it was that uh, Trump's actions had escalated the risk of war between uh, Washington and Tehran, and that he criticised Boris Johnson for prioritising the relationship that he has with Donald Trump over the interests of the British people uh, because of, of course, those uh, upcoming post-Brexit trade talked. He said that he's hitched his progress to a toxic Trump trade deal. Now, Boris Johnson laughed that off, said it was absolute fiction and that the safety of British personnel in the region is paramount. So, But no, there is no question that, of course, those trade talks are upcoming and this will be a big test for Boris Johnson. Uh, that he, will, he is walking a very sort of uh, fine line uh, diplomatically here between Iran, the Europe, and the US. Now, of course, all eyes now are on exactly what Donald Trump will do next. He is set to make a statement, speak uh, this morning very soon. So we'll find out that very soon. All right. So a little bit earlier on, you said that uh, there was uh, talk that the uh, attacks were legal based on the evidence that had been seen. Did they say much about what they saw or just that they saw something? Well, the Defence Secretary spoke in length about this in Parliament yesterday and he did caveat uh, his statement with the fact that he, of course, hasn't seen it as much as uh, US intelligence will have, but as far as what he has seen, and he can't confirm exactly what that is, he said the evidence does stack up, that they do have a case. The US have a case, he put it, for uh, the assassination of General Soleimani. And Boris, as I said, Boris Johnson really hardening the government, starts ramping up that language, Listing uh, the uh, what he described as Kasim Soleimani's uh, issues in terms of the fact that he supported uh, Assad's military operation in Syria and other uh, militant militia groups such as Hezbollah, uh, which, uh, as Boris Johnson said, uh, caused br the blood of British troops on his hands, the blood of innocent uh, civilians, and called on the opposition to condemn. Qasem Soleimani. So that language, though, very much uh, seen by many people here as a, a sort of way of, of siding uh, with the U.S., of, as met, sort of pleasing uh, the U.S. Is, uh, in many ways. Uh, but of course, as I said, it's a very fine line that Boris Johnson is walking here because what uh, decision he makes, who uh, he's sort of riding two horses in many ways, calling for calm, calling for de-escalation. Uh, but of course, uh, with the post-Brexit trade talks, uh, Upcoming. He really does, whatever he does, uh, will really affect mm -hmm. international relations for the weeks, months and years to come. In terms of the British objectives here, they of course want to keep the coalition forces, keep their troops in Iraq. Uh, as we've heard many a time over the past few days, uh, British government saying that the only uh, people that will benefit will be IS and other militant groups, whether to be a withdrawal of troops in that area. They want to continue, as they put it, the shared fight against Daesh, as well as that, of course, uh, Boris Johnson and the UK have long been a strong supporter of the JCPOA, uh, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or as it is otherwise known, the Iran nuclear deal. And we have already seen the consequences of these attacks in the fact that Iran has said that it will not abide by those restrictions uh, anymore. Boris Johnson uh, earlier in Parliament saying that uh, that is the best way, the JCPOA is the best way to prevent Iran from developing nuclear capabilities and he sees it as a shell that has been voided at the moment but a shell that things can be put back into. So that'll be something that the government, British government will be working towards keeping troops in Iraq to fight IS and getting Iran back on board with the JCPOA as well. All right, and then perhaps finally, uh, wider reaction, mainland Europe, we're seeing Germany and Spain withdrawing troops, and I just wonder um, if they're coming to a common position uh, about what to do next, uh, uh, Britain and the rest of mainland Europe. 
Yes, Boris Johnson said that he is in talks with all world leaders, including the E3, that's France, Germany uh, and the UK. Of course, he issued a joint statement on Sunday uh, along with Emmanuel Macron and Angela Merkel. Uh, so signifying that he's standing shoulder to shoulder with them in, the, in that way and their uh, response, as you mentioned there, of course, Germany uh, and other European countries have already made the move to withdraw some troops. The UK uh, has uh, removed or non essential uh, personnel from uh, Baghdad and it has also put troops, helicopters, ships on standby were, there, uh, were they to deem an immediate evacuation necessary. So while they're of course hoping for the best, hoping for this diplomatic solution as they keep saying, they're as well planning for the worst. All right, Holly, thanks very much indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being.